in the heyday, which was, um, I would say, the 1920s to the to 1960, um, I would say there were, you know, there were there must have been dozens of kosher restaurants that had to have Jewish cooks. Now you have Chinese cooks in the Jewish restaurants, and unless you have an owner who's watching all the time, and I mean every day and several times a day, the food's going to not be so Jewish tasting. Here's an example of how a little difference can make a big difference. When I teach Italian cooking, and one of the essentials of southern Italian cooking is tomato sauce, I show people you have to cook the onion to start the sauce very slowly so that it gets soft, but it doesn't turn color. Because if you get it brown, it's going to be a Jewish tomato sauce. But if it's blonde, it's a Neapolitan tomato sauce. Just that little difference makes a big difference in the end flavor. It tastes totally different. We like burned onions. Jews like <laughs> like Jews like ribbonists. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we like fried onions, yeah. It's an essential flavor. When you look at Jewish cooking, traditional Jewish cooking, Arthur... It's all the things which we're now told are not healthy to eat. That's not true. Correct I have, it. I have to correct Okay. It. Defend Jewish cooking I'm and Jewish I'm going to defend Jewish okay, cooking. First good. of all, let me start by saying these days, first of all, there is no such thing as Jewish cooking. You understand that. No, that I don't. Jews only eat, Jews eat the food of whatever culture they're living in. That's why Italian Jews eat Italian food. Mm-hmm. And Sephardic Jews, of let's say if they're from uh, North Africa, they eat North African food. The thing is that what happens is you make all the dishes you know on these holidays. And then you get up from the table and say, I just killed myself <laughs> because of this heavy food. But if you incorporate some of this food into your everyday diet, there's nothing wrong with it. Let me give you, and also, I have, in fact, lightened it up in a lot of cases. Not to make it taste like health food. But I'll give you an example. Kishka. Kishka in the old days was ground up beef suet or chicken fat, unrendered chicken fat usually, mixed with a lot of starch. It was a starch sausage. A few vegetables just for flavor. Not that much flavor. A lot of paprika for flavor. That was killer food, if you ate a lot of it, but whoever ate more than a slice anyway. What I've done is I've added, I've used mostly vegetables, Mm -hmm. a tiny bit of rendered schmaltz just for the flavor, vegetable oil otherwise, and instead of putting it into uh, cow's intestine, which is what they did in the old days, actually, these days, if you get kishke, it comes in plastic, I wrap it in, a, in foil and bake it in the oven. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's matzo meal is the main starch, and it's a lot of carrot, onion, and celery. Mm-hmm. It's really no worse for you than, uh, than a baked potato. Another example, my kugel. I, I lightened up the potato kugel. My grandmother's kugel was divine, but it was very heavy. And I looked at even some contemporary recipes. They contained a huge amount of fat. Mm-hmm. Um, mine has a lot, a lot of eggs in it. And it's the way they're making kugel, I have to say, in the modern Orthodox community in Brooklyn. It's high, it's light, and it only has three tablespoons of schmaltz for 12 servings. So it has the tom. It has the old-fashioned flavor of grandma or great-grandma, but it's certainly contemporary. One, and uh, by the way, it's a nice portion. Mm -hmm. It has one egg, less than a teaspoon of fat, and the rest is potato and onion. You put that next to a piece of grilled fish and add broccoli, and you've got a delicious contemporary Jewish meal.